Today we changed the sequence a little bit since we had such a powerful uh, group of practitioners. I wanted to to explore some of our more powerful um, techniques. Okay, and we went through we went to our rolling series, and then we went to our lion series, which I mentioned is the yang version of the yin dog, right? We did uh, our dancing dog, our dancing dog flow, and then we did our kicking lions. I really like kicking lion series because it shows you about your ability to move underneath you, to move behind you, over yourself. Right? It teaches you to, to send your energy in many different directions and in directions that you didn't know you could send your energy. Right? By kicking in a particular way that, um, that, deep, that uh, challenges your orientation or your proprioception. Right? Your ability to know where your body is in time and space as it moves. You become more intelligent. Your body becomes more intelligent. And the Buddha practice is very particular in the way that it demands from the practitioner to become more proprioceptive, right? Or more, uh, more integrated in the mind, the body, and the spirit so your proprioception can, uh, can develop. Proprioception is achieved through the reintegration of the mind, the body, and the spirit. There's no way that you can know exactly where you are unless you are integrated, unless you're whole. And this is what these techniques create. Right? They manifest. Right? The, these particular techniques are a moving manifestation of your desire to reintegrate. I don't think there's anyone here in this room that would like to disintegrate, to continue to separate their mind, the body, and the spirit. They're like, since I'm here so that uh, I can separate my mind, my body, and my spirit a little more. No, it's usually the other way around. I believe that's why each one of you guys are here. So this particular technique develops that. And I believe that practicing those techniques is very important because they're real manifestations. Right? When we talk about manifesting what we desire, we usually talk about thinking about things, right? Or praying and asking the universe for things. I believe that a more powerful manifestation or an alternatively powerful manifestation is to actually do things that manifest or that demand or that require you to be where you want to be, right? I believe that the best way to get good at doing something is by doing it, not by thinking about it. Right? Thinking about it may be the first step. But doing it is the actual step that creates the, the change. Because when you have action, it means that you have choice. Right? And the choice is really what creates it. Let's talk about the challenge that you are going through today. So with this technique, I was asking you guys to jump over an obstacle. I had placed an obstacle, I placed a pile of yoga blocks next to you, and you had to leap over these obstacles gracefully, right? Gracefully, sustainably, right? Without landing hard and hurting your joints. And you also had to land in a very particular way, and you had to finish facing this uh, obstacle. I wonder if there's a if there's a reflection or if there's, a, if there's an application of this exercise in real life. Many times we are faced with an obstacle. Right? We're facing an obstacle. And we have to overcome it. And sometimes the first thing we do is when we look at an obstacle is we get scared. Right? Because we don't know if we can make it over. We can make over it. Right? And that brings a certain degree of fear. So today, the idea of repeating this exercise, and it didn't matter if you kicked the obstacle over and you dropped it, we all laughed and everything, but in reality, what this exercise is doing, it is manifesting your ability to trust yourself that you will be able to go over obstacles. The times that we didn't go over these obstacles, we kicked a pile of yoga blocks and you know, we made a lot of noise and it was fun. However, you realize that it's okay to not make it through the obstacle. At the very end, we were talking about if you don't make it over the obstacle, it doesn't matter, right? Maybe you weren't 
designed to go over the obstacle that time. And that's fine too. It's really easy to get the ego all, all angry when you don't make it over your obstacles. And because we have done that, because we have punished ourselves the times that we did not go over our obstacles, now we are scared of facing obstacles. Does that make sense? So we're going to change that. We're going to celebrate every time we bump against a, an obstacle. Every time we see an obstacle, we're going to be like, all right, obstacle, challenge. I'm going to go over that or through that or I'm going to hit myself on that. <laughs> but I'm going to be cool with whatever happens. I'm going to give it everything I have so that I can clear that obstacle. And if everything I have today is not enough to clear that obstacle, then it will be enough for me to learn something from the obstacle. It happened to me that in the very last attempt of clearing the obstacle, every one of you guys cleared the obstacle. How did we do that? How did we spend 20 times kicking the obstacle? And all of a sudden, you know, a good group of 10 people leaps over this obstacle that was higher than ever, right? And you're more tired than you've ever been in the whole class. How did that happen? What changed? Did I change? <laughs> no. Did the obstacle change? Yes, it got bigger. What changed inside of you? I asked you to feel that obstacle, to visualize it, and to see yourself over it. And to also see yourself being fine with kicking through it and not being over it. Once you lose the fear, of what's on the other side of the obstacle. Once you become curious to know what is on the other side of the obstacle, you become lighter. Fear is very heavy. Fear is very heavy. It's the most limiting of our emotions. Fear. When you live free from fear or fear less, you become lighter. And it becomes easier for you to navigate through obstacles. So just like you did today, next time you face an obstacle, feel it. Feel it. And be okay with not going over it. But by no means be okay with being scared of it. Fear is not for you guys. <laughs> That's why you train. That's why you train. Because one day you decided to stop being fearful of how good you could be, how awesome you could be, how powerful you could be, how flexible, how strong, how agile, how integrated you could be. The day you lost that fear is the day you started training. And because you remain fearless of it, you remain trained. Obstacles in life, challenges, right? obstacles are really lessons. And remember that behind every fear hides a desire. Remember that the way that you do anything is the way that you do everything. So if a stack of blocks freaks you out <laughs> on the practice, I'm sure that when that stack of blocks shows up in your life, you probably freak out also. <laughs> if for you obstacles are curses, in class, then for you in life, obstacles are curses. If for you, obstacles, challenges are motivational, if they, motivate, if they help you motivate yourself to be the best you can be on your practice, that's probably the case in life. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. And the reason why you practice is so that you can change the things that you would like to do better so that you can do everything like that. So keep using that mat as the shiniest of mirrors to learn from your practice what your limitations are, what your limitations are, what your challenges are, and how you are responding to them. Or if you're just simply reacting by being scared. And wherever you are today, like if an obstacle freaks you out and scares you to death, that's cool, that's totally cool. Is it serving you? Do you choose to continue to engage in that? 
And if obstacles motivate you, and you're like, oh yeah, I can go through anything. <laughs> okay, is that serving you, right? Because sometimes we're not even conscious of that, and we're like, yeah, I can go through anything, and you end up hurting yourself, hurting others. So the idea is to develop a certain degree of awareness, where you really know yourself. When you know your limitations, and you're willing to go past them. However, you are so aware that you will remain graceful, agile, and sustainable. The way that you do anything is the way that you do everything. So continue to challenge yourself through your practice so that you can be more ready for the challenges of your daily life. Very good work today, I guess. Let's blink the eyes open. Let's bow out of class the same way we bowed in. Right hand goes to the ground, followed by the left. As we bow, we say, yes. 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 Patient. Rising. Right hand first, followed by the left. Bring the hands together, look around. Celebrate the presence of all these people that helped you today and say namaste. Namaste. They lie with me, celebrate the reason I lie with you. All right, congratulations, guys. Good work. Congratulations. Woo, you survived.